praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. 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 And I say that every day because it's the truth. Amen. Yes. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice. We should be rejoicing and being glad in it. Amen. 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 Because I tell you, God is still God no matter what. No matter what goes on in our daily daily needs, God is still God. Amen. 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 We're going to visit this topic again on feelings, feelings and emotions, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to talk about this again. I think the Lord then gave me a little bit more insight on it, but we want to talk about it again. And I wanted to use, a, 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 you know, the word hell in, 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 the, in the subject you know, but I said I won't do that. So we just said, who cares about how you feel? <laughs> I wanted to add it. I want to say, who the heck oh, cares about oh, how you God. feel? There you go. There you go. Amen. Amen. Does God care about your feelings? Mm -hmm. hmm. Or does the devil care more about your feelings? Mm hmm. And why does everyone say, unsaved, backsliders, atheists, spirit guides, witchcraft workers, workers of iniquity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all feel God? And I, I, I want to get a point from here tonight because, you know, the, the saints of God, I make them the saints, okay, believers, all believers really are under the impression that they are feeling God. Amen. And I've been trying so hard to tell them, no, you're not. No, you're not. So what is it about feelings that leads so many into believing that they are right and in right standing with God? So our topic is feelings. Amen. But we're going to talk about emotions also and love. Because we're going to use love as our example. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you so much for this new day. We thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to be able to expound on the word of God, oh God, to speak the word of God, to give that to, oh God, the hearers and the doers from your heart. That which you have poured out of your heart through my mouth, oh God, we say thank you for it. Lord, this is our Bible study, and as we always say, you are so welcome. We welcome you in to come in, oh God, speak through my mouth, that the hearers and the doers will hear and obey the word of God. In the name of Jesus, and that our lives, our circumstances, and situations and issues will begin to change as we hear the word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 So again, it's feelings, amen? Amen. 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 So just, just real quick, real quick, now, because I, I want to go through this here and get to this. So well, what is your definition of feeling? The peanut gallery over there. Where's your mic? I don't want to say emotions that happen through your flesh, but... Why your mic ain't working? Hello? She just can't get this thing right to save Jesus. It's not on. I mean, it's on, but it's not on. Okay, there it is. Oh, maybe you need to hold it to your mouth. Feelings. What 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 do you all believe? What what is your definition of feelings? Everybody ain't got to respond at one time. Okay, we'll say it through the mic. It's um What's the way she's holding that mic? That mic has to be held to the mouth. It's how do you say it? It's in your flesh, but it's not an emotion. It's just it comes from your flesh, like the way you Okay, you and Brother Mark ain't gonna get a chance to pick it back off of nothing each other said. Okay, that's your that's your one. Okay, let's go. Uh, you know, ditto. We ain't doing ditto tonight. Uh, I believe feelings are um, the flesh's reactions to uh, to uh, whatever is being influenced by uh, by the senses. Um, Cause you looking at my notes, Raymond. No, that's honestly. <laughs> Okay. Okay. He was piggybacking off. No, he wasn't. He was just <laughs> Sis, you want to you want to stab at it? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amen. So feelings, feelings are subjective. Okay. 
Self-contained, I'm going to get real, real technical with your verse here in the beginning. Self-contained phenomenal experiences. Feelings are subjective. Self-contained phenomenal experiences. And phenomenal means perceptible by the senses or through immediate experience. Phenomenal means perceptible by the senses or through immediate experiences. I'm hoping that, that we can actually begin to see that every time we go to feel and stuff, that that's not God. Because God is a spirit and he deals with us spiritually. So he deals with us from the inside. Amen. He does not deal with us through this flesh because the flesh is evil. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So feelings are subjective, evaluated, and independent of the sensations, thoughts, or images evoking them. And of course, you have to use the five senses. We're going to get there too. Feelings are closely related to, but not the same as emotions. Everybody has the tendency to use the feelings and emotions as being the same, but they're not the same. There, there's a difference between the two. Because one thing, the, the feelings deal with the conscious mind, and the emotions deal with the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Feelings refer, may refer to the conscious, okay, your conscious, means aware of and responding to one's external surroundings, what you see around you, what affects you, you know, in, outwardly here, externally. You know, like you go through the door and, you know, you could get a feeling just from coming in the door and stuff, you know, or when you go in the bed, your bedroom or something, you're like, mm, what did I come, you know, those things are, those things are, are external. And feelings are ignited or activated from that kind of stuff. So feelings are not spiritual. Oh, I know that's going to blow a lot of people away. <laughs> feelings are not spiritual. <laughs> feelings are a result of your body registering, in, registering information from your five senses experiencing physical and external reactions. Mm -hmm. They are a result of the body registering, and it's really the flesh. It's not, it's not the body, it's really the flesh. But the body responds to whatever's going on in the flesh or in the soul. The body, the actual body responds. Because there's this like an impulse when it's, when it's coming from the soul, it's like an impulse to the body. Whenever it's the five senses and the five, based upon what you see, whatever reaction, I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm hurt, whatever, the body has some kind of response to that. So feelings are, are a result of your body registering, register, registering, okay. Information from your five senses experiencing physical and external reactions. Feelings are just a project of bodily experience. Feelings are like an instant reaction of the body. Feelings and emotions seem to be considered as the same because they can be felt through the body, but they are not the exact same. Because see, when the Lord, when we're born again and the Spirit of God quickens you, there's an impulse. The body experiences a quickening motion. Just like when we had babies and we felt the fluttering of that baby quickening in our, in our stomachs to let us know there's life on board. I'm, I'm moving now. But there's that, that's quickening, meaning alive. It's coming alive. And that's the way our body responds. Our body responds to the quickening of the new life in Christ when we're born again. And it's not a feeling. Now, like the baby fluttering, that's a feeling because we can feel that flutter in, our, in, our, in the bottom of our stomachs when that baby first moves. 
It seems to me that it is a negative or positive feeling that generates an emotion. So emotion, this is where they get the emotions and the feelings together because the feelings can generate an emotion based upon a negative or positive thought. Okay? Hebrews 4 and 12 says, and this is for the smart people that says, well, you know, Jesus was touched, you know, by the, by the he was acquainted with our uh, feelings and stuff. This is for the smart people. Okay? So, he, and he was. Hebrews 4 and 12 tells us that Jesus can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Infirmities is physical and mental weaknesses. We're still talking about the outward lady. Okay? And liabilities, meaning the burdens, the handicaps, the hindrances that we have towards sin. To the assaults of temptation during his early life, he was also tempted in every respect, just as we are, yet without sin, because he had flesh too. And you know, nowadays, they got all this here so-called history. They call it the history. <laughs> Uh, they call it the religious history, you know, and they're coming up with all kinds of accusations where Jesus had, he, he was in love with Mary Magdalene. Some of that stuff I don't even listen to, okay, because I know it's hogwash, okay? It's hogwash according to my faith that I have in Christ. So that's why I don't listen to it. And now they claim he had all kinds of other feelings and stuff. Well, the Bible says that he was, he was touched by the feelings of our infirmities. infirmities. By our physical weaknesses. 4 and 15. Did I say 4 and 12? I'm sorry. Hebrews 4 and 15. I'm sorry. I tell you, bifocals don't work for me. Not in these glasses, they don't. Jesus demonstrated the conquering of the will of his flesh and its nature to do the will of the Father. No matter what he was tempted with, because he, he did have flesh, and in the flesh is the sinful nature. That's the nature that we inherited, okay, from the sin of Adam and Eve. Amen? Amen. So therefore, because see, we were, we, were, we were created in the image of God, which is nature. But that was before the sin. That was before the rebellion and stuff. So now we all are born in sin. Okay, now I have to constantly say this. We are born in sin. Psalms 51 and 5 will tell you that. Okay, if you think I'm joking. We were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Well, what do you mean by shaped in iniquity? This is it right here. You're shaped in iniquity in this flesh. This flesh has been shaped to us. Amen. And so, and in sin did our mothers conceive us. So therefore, we were born in sin because everyone that's born of a woman and, and has sin, I mean has flesh, which that's everybody, has sin. This is a sinful nature right here of mankind, of all of us. Just waiting to be triggered, waiting to be activated, waiting on somebody to press his button. Amen? Amen. That's what it's waiting on. So the carnal mind and its imaginations come up with all kinds of thoughts and images as to say that Jesus did these same things too. He was weak too. He was physically and weak mentally. They come up with all of this stuff. But then they love to say, but he was God in the flesh. Okay. So now you need to make up your mind. Either he was, either he was, he was doing the stuff that you claim that we do, okay? Or he wasn't, or he was God, and he was holy, so therefore he didn't do it. But again, like I said, I just mentioned that, but I don't even entertain stuff like that. Because, see, my faith don't allow me to go into those areas like that. And I love that. I appreciate the Lord for that. So Jesus has empathy for all mankind. Not sympathy, not compassion, but empathy. Okay? <coughs> He has empathy. In other words, he demonstrated the ability to understand and share the feelings and emotions of all mankind as if he was feeling man's feelings and 
motions himself. So that, that's where the acquaintance comes from. You know, but yet he was without sin. The Bible always says, but yet he was without sin. So therefore, I don't care what, how much his flesh was healing and feeling and humming and, and all that kind of stuff, he did not sin. And that was it. That was what he demonstrated for us when he came. And, and you know, and it's sad that many believers cannot grasp this. You know, because they 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 love to fall short to the, the physical disability and the mental weakness of their flesh. You know, I just couldn't help myself. I had to sin. It was just it was just all it was just pulling at me. Well, if you pulled on that name Jesus, I guarantee you it would have been a struggle, a big time struggle. Knock you out the way and here come the fire. But the thing is, we don't see it like that because I don't know how a lot of people are taught the Bible, the Word of God. Because, see, I believe that we have to be taught to the point of understanding. So when we leave the house of prayer or we leave the presence of one another, we need to be able to depend upon the word of truth that we've heard in the gospel. And it's the gospel that's going to fight whatever is coming against you. Not you. It's the gospel. Amen. So that's how you know that you've heard the word. Because God will raise up a standard against whatever thing is coming against you. The Bible teaches us that when the enemy comes in like a flood, he said that the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So God will automatically fight. Why? Because I heard the word. So emotions, are there any questions about feelings? Any comments? Yes, ma'am. So with the emotions, I can see the difference between the emotions and the, the feelings because when, when you feel something, like you said, it, you're feeling it through like your flesh, like mm -hmm. your ego. With five senses, yeah. You know, all that stuff. But the emotions, it's almost like you can feel that on the inside, like the pity of your stomach almost when they come out, like or from the inside and then out. Yeah, because it, it, it generates from the inside. Emotions come from the inside, from the inward man. So therefore, but the body will display what that emotion is. You know, because it's really, Hollywood is good at it, okay, because they, they are exactly what they say, actors. But it's hard to cry. Yeah. yeah. You, you, it's, 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 hard, it's really hard to cry. You can't just all of a sudden just haul off and cry. Crying is, is, is an emotion. But something has to trigger that emotion in order to do it. That's why whenever we get saved and we become aware of the fact that we need a Savior, that we need Christ Jesus, that's why you can begin to cry and don't know why you're crying. That's how it comes. That's why you, can, you begin to, you begin to, you know, you begin to just so talk about how sorry you are because, you know, you now are aware spiritually that I'm wrong and I need a Savior. And those tears begin to flow. But it's a soulish thing. It's not, a, it's not an outward natural thing. I want y'all to be able to see that. Amen? Yeah. Even when you mash your finger in the door and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a natural thing. Oh, no. But it, but, it, it, but it hits the physical, the natural, but it, the, its response is coming from the soul, this realm. You know, that hurt. All oh, that hurt. You know, that really hurt me. So it generated that response. Hurt. Tears may come with it, too. Maybe even a few cuss words. You know, it depends on where you are and you walk. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm just saying. It depends on where you are in your salvation. Yes, ma'am. So before I um, found out I was pregnant with Kalani, there was a moment where I was literally sitting on the couch and I just bust out and started crying. And yeah. I could not understand why I was crying, but I literally was just pouring down crying like, mm -hmm. like a baby. Almost. They claim that's hormones, but but it's the thought and the awareness. It was the awareness of the fact that I'm not good. <laughs> that, 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 that was awareness. 
They, they, the, the, the natural man, the doctors say that's hormones, but that, but, but the, but the, but the, the inwardness of that thing, the reality of it, the awareness of it became aware. Oh my God, I'm not done. Yeah. Yeah. But see, that's why I said when we talked a couple of weeks ago, the doctors don't have a prescription for sin. They don't. They can't prescribe anything for sin because they don't know the spirit man. And see, it's the flesh man that's doing all the danger. That's keeping it. That soulless realm in the bondage because he keeps supplying him with stuff, natural stuff. I'll give you this. I'm gonna give you that. Oh, bam! You got a house. You got, you got to be, and you're supposed to be satisfied with that stuff. But then when it's time for the, for the soul now, once you've got all this materialistic stuff, but you still have a void, and soul is still downtrodden. David says in one of the Psalms, he said, he says, he says, you have to tell your soul to lift up his head because he's downtrodden. He, he gets sad. And you know, a lot of times people, and doctors call that depression. Okay. That's what they, I'm trying to tell you. They got a name for everything that's spiritual, but it's not spiritual. But the things that go on in these bodies, amen, and, and you have to agree to it, okay, with the doctors in order for it to become true. Yeah. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So when you're with the doctor, you've got to agree with him. Because like I always said, he can't look at you and tell you that you sin. Yeah, because you walk, you're walking in agreement. The two, the two are agreeing, and that's why a lot of people, like I said, they accept arthritis, they accept sicknesses, they accept I can't do this. I can't. See, those are physical and mental weaknesses, and that's what mankind does. He plays on that without salvation. He plays on that without without the Lord, and then he'll write you a prescription. Emotions. Emotion is a mental state. See, emotions is mental. They're not natural. It's a mental state that arises spontaneously rather than through conscious effort and is often accompanied by physiological changes. <coughs> Does he want to go back there? So emotion is a mental state that arises spontaneously, rather through conscious, in other words, it's not through the conscious effort, and it's often accompanied by physiological changes. And I'm going to tell you about this physiological, okay? Physiological is relating to the way in which a living organism, you and I, or bodily parts function. So in other words, I don't have no control over my heart. There's nothing I can do for my heart. I can't, there's nothing I can do for my lungs. I can't say, I can't stop my breathing. I mean, I can hold my breath for a few seconds, but that's not going to stop it. Yeah, it, 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 it goes on its own without conscience. In other words, I can't think on, well, okay, heart, you need to beat down. You know, I can't think on that. It's automatic. I love the way God did this thing. See, man has some good understanding of stuff, but they try to uh, 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 accredit to it to themselves. They're patent it to themselves because they got a little knowledge. But the thing is, they don't understand the spiritual part of what it is they know. So therefore, by them not understanding the spiritual part of it, they won't apply that to God. So the physiological is relating to the way in which a living organism, which is we, us, or bodily parts function. These functions are carried out by organs, tissues, and cells of the body. Physiological functions occur without conscious self-control. Even if they give you medicine and stuff, they can't give you medicine to keep your heart beating. 
They think they can. That life support machine, that thing that sounds like a, 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 a something gushing in and out of you, that is not, you already dead when they put that thing on you. The person is already dead. It's just, only thing it's doing is taking their body and raising their body with that noise. You know, it's causing the body to inflate and deflate. The person is already consciously dead. That person is gone. And now they're playing with the heart and the kidneys and the lungs and stuff. They're playing with that stuff now. They get day more dangerous and dangerous every day. Yeah. And then they give you medicine. You know, I appreciate the doctors, but I think they need to stay in their lane. And they need to put Jesus Christ in their, in their order. But they, 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 they do, like I said, they know the anatomy, but that's about it. We're God's product. When you God's product, God holds the key. He holds the flash drive, the disc, to the total man, the whole being. Man don't know that because he don't want to accept God. Emotions are a result of the details as they are perceived by the heart. Now mankind says the brain. The natural man says the brain. But the spirit man says the heart. And not the heart, not the not the heart out here that's pumping the blood, but the spiritual heart. Because believe it or not, it's the spirituality that keeps us alive. The blood that's that's pumped in us is only keeping this body. It keeps the body alive, the flesh. Because without that and the breath, we ain't we're dead. We're nothing. So when God calls us out of here. He begins to deflate us. <laughs> I like that. That was, that was, I saw that the other day. It's just like, you know how the air comes, you let the air out of, out of something, a figure or something? That's the same way life does with us. When it's time for us to die, and as we get older and older, if we get older, or as we get into the end that God has given us, whether we be young or old, that air begins to deflate. And the thing is, we don't pay attention to it, though. That's the thing. We don't pay attention to it. I had to get saved, I tell you, because I told y'all I knew it was too much blocking me. In the world, the world didn't have what I needed to know. <laughs> they just didn't have Is there any questions about emotions? Any comments? Emotions are the result of the details as they are perceived by the heart. Emotions are a topic of controversy for man. Man can't understand emotions. They don't understand love either. You'll find that out too. Emotions come from the heart since your heart plays an important role in emotional experiences. Jesus said that the heart is the center of life of man and that which comes out of man's heart is what defiles him. We hear this often, St. Mark 7, 20 through 23. St. Mark 7, chapter 7, verses 20 through 23. Okay. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. Verse 21 says, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders. 22 says, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. And verse 23 says, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Now, isn't that something, you know, when I was reading that earlier today, I said, well, Jesus just came in here as a physician himself. When he came, when he came, he came as a physician himself to let us know that, oh, okay, this stuff is in your heart. This is not nothing from your childhood thing. This stuff is in your heart. It has been born now in your heart. Yeah, maybe something, maybe something happened, but you stored it. You kept it in your heart. And when you keep these things in your heart and you don't have a way or a means of allowing stuff to just pass through, you know, and get it up off of you, then it's going to lodge itself in the heart. It becomes now a part of you. 
It becomes you. I think that's amazing. But Jesus came as a physician. He sure did. God said in the beginning that his spirit shall not always dwell and strive with man, for he is also flesh. Genesis 6 and 5. So God knew that by man being flesh after he sinned, he knew that this flesh was going to be trouble. But the thing is, we ain't caught on to it yet. Genesis 6 and 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That means future, in the future, forever. Yeah. And, and again, mankind wants to believe that they are morally good, so I have a good heart. Because I do this for people, I'll be nice to people, I speak. I'm friendly to my neighbor. You know, I'll help this. I'll do whatever I can to help. But the heart, Jesus is saying it's in the heart. It's going to take more than just being morally good. You're going to have to be able to love. Love goes beyond that moral, that moral uh, law. Yeah. Yeah, it's conditional because it's, it's based upon if I feel like it. Or if I see my neighbor struggling out there and I, I feel like it, I'm going to run out there and help them. But that's if I feel like it. <laughs> All of man's thinking will produce evil thoughts and evil imaginations continually without God and his spirit possessing, controlling, and dwelling in him. So without God's spirit, we are a mess. I'm serious. And I'm not talking about the breath of life that he breathed into us. That's his, yes. But that's not his to the point of making you live right. Yeah, because see, you still, people still smoke. They still drink. They still cuss, lie, cheat, steal, do all kinds of stuff. Smoke weed. All kinds of stuff that, that, that kills, that tries to kill the breath that God has placed inside of us which is a part of his spirit. But as a new creature, we have to perceive and receive the Holy Spirit. That's the one that guides and leads us. That's the one that convicts us and tells us that we are not, we are not right. Don't do this, don't do that. And that's the one that nobody seems to want. <laughs> They'd rather just go with the inhale, exhale. It said, God gave me his spirit. Yeah, but that's not the spirit that's going to deliver you. That's just the breath of God. That's his breath. This is what keeps us animated. You know what I'm saying? Without this breath, I'm, I'm dead. I'm no good. Yeah. yeah, because once his breath, his spirit, which is breath, leaves the body, we die. The body will die. And the soul is going to be judged. So emotions are primarily, are primarily impulses that motivate you to act upon the thoughts that are subconsciously thought. Whatever you have in your subconscious mind, that's what you're going to do. Now the conscious mind, again, the, the conscious mind is external. Whatever the five senses is saying, when well, so-and-so just pissed me off, I don't want to be bothered with them. Okay, that's, a, that's like a five sense thing, a conscious thing. So therefore, you know how to avoid that. And nine times out of ten, it won't, well, it will display uh, an emotion, but it's going to be a negative emotion. Yeah. yeah, I'm angry at them, I'm mad at them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My grandmother said, I'm mad at you. So therefore, we have to be able to understand that the emotions can be negative and they can be positive. And they are triggered by this external stuff, what's going on. Love as an example, okay? We're going to use love as an example. Now, let's not get lust uh, mixed up with love because lust is not love. Lust is lust. It's lust. Lust is a feeling. Love is not. Love is a sensuous appetite, I'm sorry, love, lust, is a sensuous appetite regarded as sin. Lust is not just having a strong sexual desire for someone, but is also feeling a strong desire for something. It could be for anything, a house, a car, you know, a job, money, okay, lust. 
For example, love is not a feeling, but a choice. We said we, we share that with you all as often as we can in here. Love is not a feeling. And, 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 and uh, as I heard Miles Monroe say before, one time before, he was saying that a lot of married people need to understand that they can get away from the feeling part of their marriage and just experience the love, then they will be all right. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. Love is strong and complex. That's what Webster says. But Webster says it's, it's a strong and complex emotion is what Webster says, okay? But love is, it, it, I don't even think love really is an emotion. Love is, because when we get into it, we're going to talk about how it's a debt that we owe people, how it's a law. So therefore, I, don't, I can't even say it's an emotion. I really can't. But it's a mix, it's a mix of emotions, behaviors, beliefs associated with strong feelings of affection, protectiveness, warmth, and respect for others and one another. So love covers a range. It covers a range. So 1 Corinthians 13, and we're just going to read verses 1 through 3, but if you want to read the whole chapter, because it tells you all that love does. Love is awesome. It's powerful. Because that's how what God created everything. He created us in love. He created the universe in love. Everything he created, he did it in love. That's why when he sent us to hell, he does it in love. Yeah. <coughs> First Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. And I said, but you know, take the time to you know, to read the rest of the chapter, okay, but I'm just going to do the first three verses. And I have a reason for doing that. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, which is love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. You know, where there ain't nothing in there. You're empty. You're empty. Ain't got nothing. Verse 2 says, And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I'm nothing. So out of all the gifts that we have of the Spirit, all the things that we do for God, and we do it without love, you have not done anything. And if you're doing it with running the camera up in folks' face just to show people what you're doing so they can say, oh, that's so nice. Oh, God is using it. Oh, you don't have nothing. <laughs> Verse 3 says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. So out of all the the, the, the I see, I see, and ha ba 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 laying hands on folks. If there's no love there, all of that stuff is nothing. It's of none effect. And see, and you can't just love your family and be prophetic. Amen. <laughs> Let me put that out there. You can't just love your family, your church family, your 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 flesh and blood family, and maybe everybody else, it's not working for you. All that you done, done put in the tongues and all that prophecy you done put out there is null and void because there's no love there. And we have to be able to love as new creatures in Christ, born again. We have to love the unlovable. We have to love people we don't even know. You don't have to know people to love them in Christ. I ain't gonna get no amens there. <laughs> But you really don't, because like I said, we so tied into flesh and blood, family. And we so tied into, you know, co-workers, people that we grew up with, people I like, my friends, my BBFs, and all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, and we're missing the whole point of salvation. We missed the whole arena of God. The harvest of God is on the outside of all the people we done covered up in a hole. Again, crabs in a bucket. All the ones in that bucket that we love, we don't want to get apart from them or separate from them. But the work, the real love, the people that you need to love is on the outside of all of them people. 
Because it's so hard to, it's hard to love a person in sin. And then you say you love them, and, and, and the thing is, and it is, it's hard to love them. Because see, let's go to 1 Corinthians 13. Are you there? Read that verse, uh, I think it's verse 4 or 5. Read that verse for me. Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Does okay. not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. So there's no such thing as self love. There's no such thing as self-love. It does not, it does not, love does not entertain. It was the one that, um, it was the one that it doesn't entertain. Uh, it was a mystery in, in Bible, in Sunday school, when he was talking in Sunday school. It, re, it does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. So love, you can't tell me what I love my parents and they ain't sinning and then you're going to rejoice with them. Because love don't do that. In other words, love is not going to uphold mom and daddy sin. Husband and wife sin. Brother and sister sin. Love don't do that. And, and the Bible says it, re it rejoices not in iniquity. And then, like I said, then whenever our family members or friends, whatever, they do wrong, they say, oh, but I still love you, and, and, and you're going to be all right. Uh-uh, you, you got too much going on there. You're going to have to pick a struggle. <laughs> you're going to either love them and correct them and go on about your business, or you're going to love them as you say, I love you, and you're going to uphold them in their mess. You're gonna, in other words, you're going to compromise with them. And that's not love. Love doesn't compromise. And that's where, and another thing with the saints and stuff, as we, as we are all together in, we say that we're all in the body of Christ. But I say we're not, okay? I'm always disagreeing with the saints, okay? That's my job. That's part of my job. That's my calling. Okay. Anyway, but the thing is, we all say that we in the body, that the body of Christ is in trouble. No, the body of Christ is not in trouble because Christ is the head of the body. So how does that put the body in trouble? No, this is that duplicate. This is that replica that Satan has designed. And this is those people that are walking in the flesh, living in the flesh, they're carnal minded, but they're still saying, I got that about the head, I got that about the they still speaking in tongues. They still talking about, oh, I love you. Uh-uh. But they're lying. They're lying to themselves. That's not the body of Christ. The body of Christ with Christ Jesus as the head cannot operate like that. It will not operate like that. And again, people need to change their terminology. Stop trying to blame that you, claim that you're in the body and you're still fornicating. You shacking with people. You sitting around here living adulterous lives and stuff. You lying. You deceitful and stuff. You picking and choosing who you want to love. That's them feelings that do that stuff. <laughs> them feelings say, I don't know if there's something about you. I just don't lie. I get a bad feeling. Yeah, well, you keep getting it then. So love, love, love doesn't do those things. It doesn't do that at all. Love is a force generated by a decision. You must choose to love. You've got to be able to choose to love a person. That means regardless of what you do, the part of you that I don't like, the part of me that loves you, the will that chose to love you will override that. Uh -huh. them, little, them little idiosyncrasies that, that we all have that we don't like about one another. Love has to overshadow that for me to be able to see what God sees in you. To be able to see the righteousness of God. To be able to see your expected end as God sees it. And But the thing is, we love to pick and choose. <laughs> we love to pick and choose the parts that we want to, you know, just like we playing shuffleboard or something. I like you today, but the, oh, the, the other day you just got on my nerves. Uh-uh. If you love me, that thing 
Can't roll it off for you. It's like one of them jumps back. <laughs> oh, you ain't got no comments on this, sis. No. Oh, darn. <laughs> darn. Mm-mm. And that's how she... Mm-mm. See, love, love is the key. Love is the key. So love, huh? Yeah, it is. Love is a force generated by a decision. I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. You must choose to love. You got to choose to love a person. Anybody, everybody. Because as a new creature, you have no choice. Jesus came and he loved the world, okay? Because God loved the world. So he had to love all of us. And why are we picking and choosing? And we said we're in him. Okay, let me get on. Oh, yeah, let me move on. Love is an act of the will, with some, not some kind of emotional concoction. In other words, it don't fluctuate. Love don't go up and down. Love is not a feeling where you can, you can move me at, 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 at certain times of the day or with your ways. No, you don't fall in and out of love. Because if that was the case, God would have ain't gonna tell you how many new worlds he would have started over by the time we got there. Because he'd have got, he'd have got, he'd have got mad at mankind every time. So remember now, remember the spirit man in you and I lost consciousness of the spiritual things of God when Adam and Eve rebelled against God which caused us to be born in the sinful flesh. We said that earlier. And we have the nature of sin. This flesh has the nature of sin. Okay? And we are born spiritually dead, but we, in the natural, this flesh is sinful. Okay? We've got to understand that. And in that sin, we lost self-control. Okay? And the will, the gift of will that God created us in implies self-control. So the enemy knew what he was doing even in the garden. Okay? When he tricked Eve, he knew what he was doing. And that's why I said I had to laugh the other night when I was talking to Sister Jasmine. And we were talking and stuff. I said the devil is in everything. He's, in, he's got his hand in everything. And he's already formulated so much. To the point that every every child is born now. He's even in the areas now of the children because see, he's got to keep that homosexual spirit, that lesbian spirit, active now. So the adults is not accepting it so much. Or oh, he's got the recruits enough recruits in the adults already. So now let us hit the children. Now let us get into the schools. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, he's in everything. Let us set it up in the cartoons. Let us let us make laws now. Let man make laws now for for, for the, this uh for whatever the status they call themselves, okay? And, and and stuff. Let us make laws for them so that we can protect them. So that way people can't bash them and talk about them. Well, what about free speech? I guess that goes like the women there, okay. But anyway, the thing is, the devil is in everything. He's all over the place, and he has already set up things in the generations. It's already set up. And because the generations that are now, you know, I guess a little bit past you all, but at, right at your generation, it ain't that much past you, know what I mean? It's barely, yeah. This generation, you can't, they don't want to hear nothing about God. They want to do everything they can to challenge God and say, oh, I can do what I want to do with my body. You're not going to tell me what to do. Oh, I can marry this man and sleep with another man if I want to because that's my choice. I got lust desires for, uh, mm -mm. I love this man too. I can love two men too. A bunch of crap. But I'm telling you, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And the saints want to pray for everything but, what's, for, but for what's going on. Amen. They want to pray for everything but for what's going on. And seeing what's going on is going to affect every one of us to a certain extent if we're not in Christ. And we saw, let me say this and go back into this lesson here. And if we don't start worrying about the rapture and the end times and, and, and instead of being concerned about getting our soul right, 
So whenever the end times do come, if I'm still here, or the rapture do take place and I'm still here, I will be ready to do what the scripture says. I'll be called up. You know what I'm saying? The moment God decides that he's going to declare time no more, nobody's going to know it, but your soul will know it. Y'all missed that one. I'm telling you, you missed that. Your soul will know that God has cracked the sky and his judgment time is coming. See, the soul is going to know that. That's why we have to have our soul back in the hand of God. It's got to be back with the Father, not shucking and jiving out here, trying to live straddling the fence halfway in the world and, and halfway in, in the building. I ain't going to say the church. I'm going to say in the building. You know, but the thing is, we're worried about the wrong things. We're concerned about the wrong thing. We want to prophesy to the building, to the roof comes off, but yet and still, we can't even get up off the floor. You know, we don't have enough power to get up uh, to the statue, out the statue. Yeah, climbing out the bucket. So that's why we minister only to those in the house with us. We only minister to those that we like. And then we only minister to them carnal things, natural things, never spiritual things. Let me stop one here. <clears throat> here, way here. So the nature of will implies self-control, that which we lost due to sin. You can decide to love your enemy. Jesus said do so, St. Matthew 5, 44. That's a decision you have to make. He says, but I say unto you, love your enemy. Who loved their enemy? I do, because if you love them, you'll know what they're doing. Oh, girl, take your hands. <laughs> love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. I have to bless those that can't stand me, and I know they can't stand me. I'm telling you, it blesses my soul <laughs> to go around people that I know don't, don't have nothing for me. It do. It blesses my soul. Because, see, that, that's growth for me, to know that I can be in your midst. I can be around you. I can serve you, love. I can serve you, Jesus. And it's not conditional either. It is not conditional. And, and knowing it's, it's you grinding and cringing it on the inside because I'm doing that. And then you have to try and, and show face and show a face on the outside that says, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And it's eating you up on the inside. It's tearing you up. Because you can't find nothing in me to relate to that same feeling that you have against me. So Jesus said, you got to, you got to choose to love. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. I'll fix some dinner in a minute. <laughs> and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. We stay busy doing that kind of stuff. Because you got a lot of haters and backstabbers. That's all they preach about around here is haters and, and backstabbers. Yeah. And how somebody was talking about them. Well, Jesus told you to love these people. <laughs> <laughs> St. Matthew 5, 44. I'm telling you, the believers choose what part of the scriptures they want. They do. They choose the part that they want to live and not live, and then they want to lay hands on you and pray for you. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Let's not go that route. I need to see the whole being in right standing with God. That's why he gives us spiritual discernment, so we'll know that. We obey a command out of our will. It's your will that obeys the command. Because see, your will is what it, your weapon is in the earth. Every one of us have one. If you don't want to do something, you say, no, I'm not doing it. I'm good at that. <laughs> you say, I'm good at this. I'm good at saying no. But the thing is, if you want to do it, you say, yes, I will be a part of that. Or yes, I will do that. Yes, I'll be there. But that's your will that's speaking. That's your will making that determination that you're going to do. Well, we have the power to tell the devil no. 
We have that same power in us that when your flesh says, you know you want to go do this, shut up. You're not going to, we're not doing nothing. And then if it gets that bad, still ran up on you and you, you know, it's going to engulf you and stuff, so let's go on a fast. I'm going to put you on a fast now. I bet you your flesh will shut up then. The word of God is God's command to the spirit man, not to the flesh man, to the spirit man. Love has no feelings, okay? If God responded to us from the way he felt about us, we would never be redeemed today. Jesus would have never came on our behalf. If he, if he felt, okay, if he was feeling stuff, Okay, if God was feeling like we feel him, and he's feeling us like we feel him, he would have never sent Jesus. Jesus would have never came and fulfilled the assignment of God, the heart of God for all mankind. He would have never done it. He would have told me, uh-uh, they ain't going to do nothing for you. They ain't going to they ain't treat you right even when you do go down here and die for them. And, they, and he knew that. He saw that. Feelings are chemicals are a chemical. Feelings in us are a chemical, and chemicals change every five seconds. I can go through that door and come back out here not like you and look at you real funny. I'm serious. I can go out we we could have been laughing, ha ha, walking in oneness, in agreement. And the minute I turn my back, because of the chemical reactions, the chemicals in me. Something could have gone flashed up in my mind just that quick and said, you know you don't really like that person. And then I'm coming back out and now I got to put on a false face. Mm -hmm. Because that thing done come back to my remembrance what it was I really didn't like about you. But that's a chemical reaction. That's chemicals. They're changing. Love, when married people fall in love, fall out of love rather, that means there's a chemical change. Yeah, when they say, I don't love you no more after 30 years. Yeah. Oh, I, I just don't love you no more. There's a chemical change there. Something has happened. Now, also, you've got other things in the world that has entertained that too now. Okay? But something had to trigger that chemical change in that person, in that husband or that wife. You get it? Just say another woman or another man. Another woman or another man. Yeah. It's almost like that emotion. It's like a bubble of emotion mm -hmm. that just gets burst. Yeah. The flesh is all automatically on board after that. Yeah, because you begin to see things in this person yeah. that you don't see in that person no more. He come to change. And you would have never saw that before. Yeah, if you hadn't been out there indulging and looking so hard. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for something new. I'm looking for something different. And the thing that always get me, and you call me nasty, shut your ears, and you know, <laughs> but the thing is, the thing that gets me, only thing you're doing is going from one vagina to another, one penis to another. They all do the same thing. They all do the same thing. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Now, the ability, I didn't say nothing about the ability behind it, <laughs> but the purpose of all of it is the same. Thank you. So if I love you because I feel like I love you, I may lose that love in about five minutes or less. Mm -hmm. So love is a debt I owe, Romans 13, 8. It says, owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. All I owe you is love. Love is a debt. It's not a feeling, it's a debt. It's what I owe you. So if you buy my lunch or something, Brother Mom, and then you're looking at me a week later, wondering when I'm going to repay you and buy your lunch, I'm going to say, I've already paid you in love. <laughs> Man, I'm serious. Because you got people, you know, this is what people do. Okay, you do me, I want you to do me. You, I do you, you do me. Okay, that's what they do. If I be nice to you, I want you to be nice to me, but that's not love. That's not 
Chicago. I'm laughing because they do that at work all the time. I'm like, I'm so mad. Don't let the fat meat of ain't go back. Because they're going to have to ride off of that thankfulness. They have to write your own off on the taxes, <laughs> And you gonna always, when they said free, you gonna be right there. And then after you eat six or seven meals, they're gonna say, Jasmine don't never offer nobody nothing. Oh, did you expect her, girl? You use the word free. For example, most of the time when we owe people, we don't always feel like paying them. That's a feeling, okay? But we don't feel debt. You don't feel the debt because when you choose you know, based upon your integrity, your obligation to pay, you chose to pay these people. So therefore, out of the obligation, you go ahead and pay them, but that's not a feeling. Yeah, okay, but well, that's different. Don't you say that loud, lady, because somebody might like, hear that girl, and then they come looking for me and you both. Oh, you're not gonna pay your student loan. <laughs> So, but do you understand what I mean about love mm -hmm. so far? Yeah. Love really is not a feeling. It's a choice that you have to make. You have to choose to love somebody that you that, that's always mean to you. You got to choose to love and deal with a person in love that, that's always using you, despitefully using you, persecuting you. Yes, ma'am. And I believe that's why it's hard for a lot of people to to almost let people go is because they want to see the good in people. They they choose to focus on that and not the negativity. Yeah. And that's how, to me, you can see people truly love somebody. Okay, well, we're going to get into that loving, how love is not selfish and love. See, if you have love, you automatically love yourself. But see, love is not stupid either. Uh, okay. Love is a law. Laws have no feelings, okay? For example, sometimes you may feel like running a red light because you're late or because somebody <laughs> in front of you and you're tired of sitting behind them. But the natural law says stop. The natural law says you have to stop at a red light. Are you feeling that? <laughs> Your feelings have nothing to do with this law. I'm just trying to let you see love is a law. Okay. Yeah, love is a law. If you love your children, you were chasing them, even though you feel for them, and you and you cannot allow, but you cannot allow your feelings to get in the way of their discipline. Yeah. All that, I'm gonna hit you! I'm gonna, you better stop! I'm gonna do uh-uh, that's not love. Because you need to flog them. Go ahead on and flog them and get it over with. You don't promise to love them. You can go ahead on and love them. And just flog them. Proverbs 13, 24 says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son. But he that loveth him chasteneth him be times. Be times mean early, sometimes, on occasion, before the usual or expected time. I like to think that is before they even get bad, just whoop them. Break they behind because they look like they get ready to do something. Oh, so I guess it's those, you know, parents that, oh, I don't want to spank them at the store because I don't want to embarrass them. Uh-uh, they show out in the store, you spank them in the store. You spank them right where they show out at. Right. Yeah, and then they will be embarrassed, not you. Yeah. They will. Why? Because I love you so much, I don't want you to go this way. That's love. You, you discipline your children because you don't want them to do certain things. You don't want them to go up a certain route because you, for, for, from experience yourself, or people you know, it didn't work out good for them. So, because we do learn from one another. Are there any questions, any comments about love so far? I know you do, girl. Because I'm a free babysitter. Just tell everybody, I'm a free babysitter. <laughs> oh yeah, you got a lot of this. Oh yeah. St. John 13, 34 through 35 says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. That is a command. You need to love one another. You know, and as I have loved you, 
that you also love one another. In other words, with the same love that Jesus, that God has bestowed upon us is the same love that we give to others. You can't have no feelings with your love. Because if that be the case, the Lord would have missed a lot of us if he was feeling us. I'm serious. If he was feeling the love to love us, he would have missed a lot of us. But the Bible said, for God so loved the world, he loved us to a great extent that was unmeasurable. Or immeasurable. immeasurable. Yeah, immeasurable. So St. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's a glow right there for the saints of God, period. Sure. Yeah, because they got only certain commandments they want to keep. Yeah, that was the Old Testament. You don't have to do that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah. God's word is God's word. It does not contradict itself. Jesus came and he brought the law of love. Sex is not an example of love. No, it's not. No, it's not. Don't ever consider sex as love. Mm -hmm. Love is not philia. How you say it? Philia? Philia, what's these, these different uh, names of love they have? Uh, y'all know, y'all just, in other words, that's self-love. It's called, it's P-H-I-L-I-A. Oh, philia. Philia, thank you. Which is self-love, okay? That's not love. Eros, that's sexual, fleshly love. Sex gadgets and all that stuff, that's not love. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, yeah, that's what it said with the gadgets, too. God, agape love. That's love for all humanity, not just love for your family and your children. That is for humanity, agape. You know, a lot of the believers picked up, you know, when they tell you something, they say, agape. No, no, I'd rather you tell me I love you. <laughs> I'm not going there with you. Agape love is love for humanity. And it's storage, S-T-O-R-G-E. That's the love, the affection between family and family members. S-T-O-R-G-E. Storage, storage. No, storage. I didn't hear that. I just said age. It's a storage. Yeah, S-T-O-R-G-E. And if you're compromising with family members, as I said earlier, in their wrong in their wrong and spiritual weakness, that's not love. You're not loving them. You're just enabling them in their, their spiritual weakness, their mental and physical disability of not wanting to do anything. And I don't mean handicaps. I'm talking about the will. See, they still have wills. When a person still has a will to do, they're not, they're not, out, they're not out yet. You got to have the will to do. And when you don't have the will to do, then you have physical and mental weaknesses. Yeah, that's why I don't, I don't, I don't fall for this thing with mental illnesses with people because they need, they need to utilize that, that weapon that they have on the inside of them called the will. You can do the will to go hustle people. You can do the will to go and get, get free stuff. Well, you ought to be able to use your will to say, I'm alive, I can live, I will live and not die. I don't need medicine, all I need is to call Jesus. See, because I will will takes you one of two places. You either going to serve the devil or you're going to serve God. You choose each one. You got to choose which one you're going to serve. The Bible says you can't serve two masters. You're either going to serve one and despise the other. But that comes in the will. There's nothing in between. It's the will that does that. God gave us power, even though he escorted us out the garden. I say us because we were in Adam's loins, okay? Before mankind populated, we come all come from Adam. So therefore, we, we have the power. He didn't take that from us. So love is, is not, not, sex is not an example of love. Society in the world calls sex making love. Making love means that love is not in existence. If you got to make love, it's not there. Yeah, because you can't make love. Yeah. Only you got to have the, the author of love himself to get love. 
So they always talk about, well, I want to make love to you. No, that means love does not exist. So you got to come up with something for the next 30 to 45 minutes to ease your tension, your stress. That's right. And then after that's done, you allowed not to talk to me no more. Why? Because there's a chemical change now. You allowed not to speak to me no more. Yeah, them feelings that got in the way. I don't want to be wrong with you no way. Okay. So that's love. Love is a spiritual fruit. That, I'm sorry, that is not love, I just said. Love is a spiritual fruit. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, you know, know the rest. I'm not going through the rest of the scripture. But it's Galatians 5.22. Love always requires another as the object, not yourself. Yeah, the world is speaking now. Well, you got to love yourself. And you got to treat yourself. You got to make yourself. Love yourself, girl. Come on, queen. I love myself because I have love. <laughs> Y'all missed it. When you have love, you can't help but to include yourself. You can't have love for every all of humanity and not love yourself. That doesn't even make sense. Because in order for me to give love, I have to be loved. I have to be loved. Y'all ain't getting it. Like, I, I, I can just, you know, I can just sense it. <laughs> I know it makes sense. So if you love and love others, you automatically love yourself because you are love and full of love, so you are not excluded. Self-love is a worldly terminology and a way of the flesh and the devil to ease in. That's all that is for. It's designed for the devil to come on in and say, hey, look at me. I'm new. And then the, 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 the odd part about it is we adorn the outward man. We, we take this flesh man and we adorn him so much. I'm not saying don't look good, don't look decent, because I look good anyway, okay? And I don't have to have on all of this stuff to do that because I'm comfortable with my the way I look. I'm satisfied with that, okay? I'm content, as the Bible says. But the thing is, you, if you don't have, if you have a low self-esteem, and I'm talking about women and men, if you have a low self-esteem of yourself, you want to look any kind of way because that's the way you feel. <laughs> that's the way I feel, okay? But I guess it can go. Speak louder, please. It can go both ways. You can look any kind of way, and then you can also look like you're doing too much. But see, that's that's where the low that's where the low self esteem come in when you do too much. Right, yeah. yeah. Cause it's like there's the people who don't do anything; they just look crazy, like you said, like anything. Yeah, cause see, I would love to talk to women that, that got them fake eyelashes on, oh cause I would love to know. I got to insert that. <laughs> I would love to know what kind of feeling that gives them. I really do. Uh, -uh I do. I want to know, cause you you walking around here almost blind. You have blinded yourself almost with this stuff on your face, and you doing all of this here, and then you had to glue them on there. That's the, that, that, that thing gets me. You glue this on your eyes, and you don't even respect the, 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 the fact that your eyes need to see to the point that you will put glue on them? My God, I might not even open my eyes up no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's dangerous. I don't care. Glue is glue. <laughs> glue is glue. And then you walk around here with that stuff on your eyes. Hey, oh, wait a minute. What happened? I think that I believe that's low self-esteem myself. Because that means that says I'm not satisfied with the way God made me. I'm not satisfied with the eyelashes I have. Well, they don't have any for, for medical reasons and stuff like that. But if you just want to walk around and look like a clown, then that makes a difference. You want to just be seen. Why do you want to be seen like that? That's all that is. I want to be seen. Now, I'm going to talk about 
talking about them nails, but them things are claws. Those are not even nails, no more. They done turned into claws. Love cannot remain within itself. And if you put all of that emphasis on yourself like that, what does that say? That's not saying, oh, I love myself. That's giving another signal saying that I'm not pleased with me. I'm, I love attention. Hey, look at me. Mm -mm, girl, I got to not look at you. That's not be frightening. First Corinthians 13, 13 says, and, and now abide in faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. If you don't love yourself and have love to love yourself, you're going to look like the world. It's just as simple as that. And I'm talking about as a new creature in Christ, a, a born-again believer. Because, see, we're supposed to set ourselves apart. We're supposed to be set apart when we get saved. And looking like the world is not set apart. It's not. I, I can't draw you if I'm wearing the same thing you got on. You peeping at me and I'm batting at you. Uh-uh. That's for something wrong. But that's, that's what people are saying now. I've seen that on social media so heavy lately when people are dancing and participating in TikTok challenges and there's half the people in the comments saying, keep on going, man of God. This is good. You winning all the souls. And then there's other people saying that's not that's not correct. You ain't winning no souls acting like the world. That's a lie. And it's, it's like half and half, but the majority is saying, oh, yes, this is And correct. then they're going to use the scripture to say, well, Paul said that when the Jew, I had to become like the Jew. Paul didn't become like the Jew. He did not lower his intelligence, his integrity in Christ to be like somebody else. Because if you don't have a scale above that which you're talking to or that which you are acknowledging, what is it that's going to draw them? Right. What is it that's going to make them say, oh, I want that. Oh, I like what I hear. What is it? About, if I'm looking like you, acting like you, talking like you, I mean, bumping and all that kind of stuff and, and I, all this slap, what is that going to do for you? And I go to saying Jesus. The only thing that person going to say to me, yeah, I know him too. Uh -huh. what you and ain't nothing gonna get done. And then gonna suck you in. That's not all. They're gonna suck you into what they know. Because if you're not stronger than them, they're gonna suck you in. Either you're gonna get them or they're gonna get you. <clears throat> okay, let me hurry up here. I know I'm, I'm oh yeah, see, I'm way over. I'm almost finished though. Give me a few more minutes, okay? The word of God teaches us that God is love. And he that dwells in love in God and God in him. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. In this, love is made perfect. That's 1 John 2, excuse me, 16 through 21. I didn't go through the whole book. Study it and you will see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about love. God's presence. The presence of God is not a feeling, but an emotional response of affection and worship from the soul and spirit realm of the spirit man in you. See, we, 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 we have to understand that we are spirit beings. The flesh will respond, the, well, not the flesh, but the body, okay? Let me be clear that, because we're body, soul, and spirit. And like I said, when we become new creatures, the shift, it shifts, it becomes spirit, we become now spirit, soul, and body. That's because the body now is taking control from the soul. The spirit is speaking to the soul, and the soul is telling the body what to do. That's why the flesh has to die, because if we don't crucify the flesh, right now, the body of the flesh, rather, that's on the body is telling the soul what to do. Okay? We become body, soul, spirit. But when we get saved and become new creatures, get filled with the Holy Ghost and everything, we become spirit, soul, and body. So now the spirit is dictating to the soul, and the soul is telling the body what it's going to do. And the flesh is dead. Because, see, when, when that process takes place like that, spirit, soul, and body, flesh has to die. It has no, it has no more authority. But as long as it's still talking, that means you are still body, soul, and spirit. And that flesh is reigning. It has governing authority. The flesh feels 
The flesh feels through the five senses in the body realm of the spirit man. The flesh has a sinful nature, the nature that we were all born in. The flesh's influence operates and functions according to the kingdom of darkness that is run by Satan or the devil or whatever you want to call him, okay? The kingdom of darkness manages, operates, and functions in and through the knowledge of good and evil in the flesh. That's the nature of flesh. The nature of all of our flesh is evil and sinful. There's no getting around it. Okay, in closing, while emotions are intangible and hard to describe, even for scientists, okay, that's because they didn't got Jesus, but they do serve important purposes to help us to learn. This is how we learn. We initiate actions, our actions and reactions. It teaches us how to respond and how not to respond, okay? And how to survive in the earth. Amen? Emotions increase the likelihood that you will take an action. When you get angry, you are likely to confront the source of that irritation. See, that's one good thing about <clears throat> the emotions, okay? And especially if you're born again, you know how to get that irritation off of you. In other words, you don't respond like you would have in the old nature, under the old nature. You begin, because see, love covers a multitude, okay? Love begins to overshadow. And if love has been perfected in you, love has become perfect and you no longer have fear. So whenever somebody try to ruffle your feathers, you don't get that, that heavy breathing and that, that trend and that grinding in your belly and them thoughts racing through your head like an interstate. You don't get all that stuff no more because I'm a new creature and the spirit of God now has balanced me out. He's balancing my emotions. He's gotten in my emotions to the point that you can't razz me. <laughs> okay, say something, say something. Yeah, 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 I know it. Okay, you, you can't you can't irritate me. You okay. can't you can't you can't raise me, move me out of my character. And that's what the devil does to new creatures. He tries to bring you out of your character, your new character. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch you, girl. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch you. <laughs> And the flesh, whenever something irritates you, see, when your emotions are in Christ, you know how to introduce that. You know how to go to that person that, that, that tried to annoy you. You know how to, that person that tried to make you angry, you know how to go to that person and say, well, I need to be able to share with you that this is something you did and I didn't like. But see, that's what the new creature does. But see, the old nature in you will say, <laughs> you know, like you grinding up something. You ready to eat that person up, oh. fight and all that. See, that's the old nature. But see, when the emotions are intact, according to the will of God, the word of God got them, the Holy Spirit got them, the fruit of the Spirit got you in balance, the mind of Christ is holding you on lockdown, I'm telling you, and this is beautiful. You got a new heart in you that they can't find the old you no more. And then here comes God. Because see, God says, no, you don't touch that which belongs to me. See, trouble has to flee when God shows up. That's why we let him fight the battles. See, even as a born-again believer, new creature, I don't have to fight no battles. But if you try to irritate me and it... I'm going to let you know. I have the right to tell you, okay, you tried, but it didn't work. Devil. Might as well call it like this because it's nothing but the devil. Okay, you, you did a good job, but it didn't work. But the thing is, we have to understand that this is why we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit terribly and desperately because that's the only way we can live this perfectively. That's the only way we can live this and be accountable and responsible to. It's because the Holy Spirit will make you accountable. It will make you responsible. 
But when he comes in, he comes to dwell in you. Everything balances out. Peace is on board. Joy is on board. Love is on board. Faith is on board. Meekness is on board. Temperance is on board. I think you have any more goodness and kindness and gentleness. They all on board. I get excited. I'm telling you about this stuff. Cause I'm telling you, when you become that new creature in Christ, you know that no weapon that is formed against you can prosper. You can go into the house and know that all hell around you, the atmosphere could be hell. But when you're in Christ, he is your protector. It's like Jesus being in that boat when the tempest of the winds came and the storms came. Jesus was in the boat so it couldn't take the boat out. So Jesus in you, when you go into your stormy areas, nothing can cause you to overflow, drown, or get caught up because why? Jesus is in control. He's controlling you. And he will take care of the situations around you. Amen? Are there any questions, any comments? Amen. Father God, we thank and praise you today for all that you've said and done for us in this house. Thank you for opening up our understanding even more. Thank you, Lord God, that now we're more apt not to give account of and count to our feelings and how we feel. But Lord God, we ask that night that you would begin now, those that heard the word, fill them, oh God, with your spirit. That the emotions, oh God, and their will, oh God, and even their intellect, their imagination, and thoughts of their heart, oh God, all these things will be in control and under the control of your spirit in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, we thank you so much once again for giving us the clarity that we need in this house. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.